heard about significant casualties arriving in Taloxa Hospital. And what we found when we got there was that there had been 100 plus patients uh, brought in with serious injuries uh, within a very short period, within about 30 minutes, they said, plus uh, about 100 deaths that were brought into the hospital around the same time. And we heard from one of the doctors at Al-Aqsa Hospital that they had a stream of patients following that for about the next 12 hours, a significant number of patients. <laughs> We've seen children, women, young men, old men and women, um, people bleeding out. I, I, at the same time yesterday at al I saw a woman who had multiple gunshot wounds. An attempt was made to refer her and she was referred back because she was bleeding so heavily. So, I mean, it, it, there, there's, there's blood everywhere in these hospitals at the moment. We're seeing almost only trauma cases come through the door and at a scale that's quite difficult to believe. Um, it, it's it's a bloodbath as we as we said before it's carnage <laughs> There's nowhere actually that's safe in Gaza. Um, we're at the UN Joint Humanitarian Operations Center right now in Rafah. Outside, outside the door of this building, uh, 50 meters from where I'm sitting right now, there's a, a camp of uh, thousands of people who have been settled here, who have resettled here um, because they've lost their homes or, or they've fled violence. Um, and they're in plastic shelters, plastic sheeting shelters uh, right outside the door. Um, and last night we heard fighting almost all night long uh, with um, reports coming in during the day today of many, many injuries presenting to the hospitals here in the south. Across Gaza at the moment, health capacity is at about 20% of what it was 80, 80 or so days ago. Uh, so almost all of the hospital beds, almost all of the hospital services have stopped functioning, either because the facilities themselves have been affected, because the staff have been forced to flee, because they run out of power uh, or, or um, they run out of uh, medical supplies and, and or, or the staff have not been able to access them. All of the non-communicable diseases, the cancer patients, the people with diabetes, the people with um, uh, heart conditions and, and other, other conditions, they're not able to access services in most of the Gaza Strip right now. Um, the hospitals are totally overwhelmed. And what we were hearing at AXA yesterday is that they don't have a shortage necessarily of surgeons. They don't have enough operating theaters. They don't have enough physical space in the hospital to accommodate the number of patients that are coming. And obviously when there's a constant stream of people on the edge of death who need life-saving care, they take priority. A limited number of supply trucks coming across the Rafa crossing. Then to get supplies to hospitals across the Gaza Strip, we have to plan with the parties of the conflict to make sure that routes are as deconflicted as possible so that we, we know as much as possible that we can proceed safely. Sometimes those routes change. They have us go through areas that are very crowded and actually with 2 million people almost displaced, we have huge crowds living in certain areas. Even here in Rafa, sometimes it's hard to drive down the street. It takes 30 minutes to go one kilometer because there are so many people in the streets. And then as you go farther north, the level of destruction is so incredible, so significant that roads are full of rubble, there are downed wires, there are downed uh, power lines and poles.
في قطاع غزة بسبب هذا يعني هذا هذا العدوان المضروب على قطاع غزة. Thank you. 